Podcast yep. number three for Friday the 5th of August, Centre Stage. Ooh. Welcome, Mal Fry. Good Ooh. evening. Hello, buddy. Good evening, Good to see you. Here. Yeah, thanks so much for coming in again. No, I doing no problem, this. Mate. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Like, it's, uh, it's great that we can get people to do this and uh, something different and uh, give it a try and see how it goes. Yeah, basically we just like talking a lot, so. Uh, oh yeah, we, we like to talk a lot of shit as well. <laughs> so we just, you know. I'll get off it, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> out of the gate, have a swear word, get everyone yeah. know what's going on. So we're gonna start with. Uh, we've got some questions, but we'll just play it as we always do. Or always, yeah, we're not gonna so fire far. the questions one after yeah. the other, yeah. but um, we'll fire one question and then we'll just we'll see how it goes. It again so let's go from the uh, let's go from the start. Um, and just find out how old you were when you first started doing anything to do with music or your first memory of music. My first memory of music, here we go. I'm excited this one. Right, when I was probably, I would say probably between three and four years of age, my mum. You can remember that far back? Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm not, I can't remember anything I did yesterday. But, yeah, I, but that, this is seared in my brain, right? My mum bought a, you know, I don't know if you can remember these things, they were flat black discs, they were called singles. You're probably too young for that. Maybe. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, she bought this single and it was a song called Sukiyaki, and it's a Japanese song All right. in Japanese language. But to my little young ears, it was so beautiful. Absolutely mm. loved it. And they used to go around like neighbours, mum and dad, quite often. Now, even as a three, four year old lad, I'd worked out how to p- use the record deck. So when they went out, I would put that on. Uh, I was addicted to that song. And I know it's sad, and I'm over 60 now, but I still remember it and I still love it, even to this day. Well. So that's my first actual musical, um, not influence, but it's the first song I'd ever actually heard mm. and fell in love with. It's amazing because, oh, like, uh, the, um, when my first kind of real addiction to music was uh, Don McLean, American Pie. My oh, mum, my mum had a big, big old LP yeah. um, of the best of Don McLean. I mean, it had Starry Starry Night. Yeah. And yeah. Baby, you can drive my car. Uh, don't, no, no, what was new? Uh, what was no? It was the Beatles. What was the other yeah. car one that he did? Um, There's lots of car songs. To yeah, be fair. I'm not sure. Was it if you wanna make me happy? Here's what you got. It's something about a car. Right. Anyway, okay. Okay. I had American Pie, and I could literally listened to that song. <laughs> Over and, and, uh, and my mum was like, Can you please stop yeah. playing I get that, American yeah. Pie? Because I just it's a fantastic song. When you get addicted to a song, you just yeah. can't help it. I know. I'm that that is one of the things that drives my missus. Funnily enough, I'm my ex missus mad. I shouldn't really have mentioned that. But anyway, but I have this habit of when I when I love a song, I do end up playing it. I'm like I'm a huge Marillion fan, the new Marillion, not Fish Marillion. And they brought out a new album about ooh, three or four months ago. And there was this song called Angels on Earth on it, which I'm going to be perfectly honest, but well, the first time I heard it, it actually got me teared up because it's all about COVID and how we as human beings deal with each other when these kind of crises come along mm. and how vital the NHS is. And I was just, I couldn't stop playing it. And my wife was like, okay, I'm going out the room now. I'm not listening to this <laughs> one more time. <laughs> <laughs> just sobbing. Yeah. Because when it worked for Royal Mail, we had some bands with Bluetooth, so of course it was Spotify, straight through, oh, and yes, other streaming yes. services were available. Of course. Um, but you know, it was straight away, it was like, oh, I'm having that already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have mm-hmm. anything on Spotify? Yes, yes, I actually yes. do. Well, yes. Feel free to promote yourself, so I've seen us over on the subject. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't, I didn't deliberately wedge that one in, but it was just no, that. No, good. Well, I didn't believe it was the old thing. I think you're lying. Damn, I thought you knew it. It was, it was pretty good to me. It was pretty good. Like, it was yeah. pretty good. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, straight in there. I didn't. I didn't see Japanese songs <laughs> to the postal workers <laughs> yeah. on Spotify. Listen, to Spotify in the work Nice little bit of meandering, Super. and there I wanted to be. Yeah, amazing. Yes, I did. I've got. Uh, I think I've got six albums on there now. Um, six albums. Wow, wow. that's nice. Well, I mean, what on Spotify? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, just to be a boy of just for a few seconds. No, right? carry on. Um, the, the the only. Um, country that I get a lot of hits from, and when I say a lot, you know, we're probably talking 40, 50 a, w- a month. Um, but it's, I had two songs that we used on TV in Holland years ago, and they were both love songs used for a program called Hello Goodbye, which is like a program about um, travellers coming in and out of Chifol Airport. Right, okay, and yeah. They used uh, two of my songs on three occasions. Amazing. And it was like, and, but the thing is, they're both real love songs, and they're both written about my wife. Current wife? Yes, oh, cool. oh, I like that. Yeah, oh, that's good. Just that's just sharp. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you missed her. Right, wife was girlfriend at the time, I have to say. Okay. But you know the worst thing about it? She wrote a verse in the second one 
and two lines in the first one. She get the royalties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just, that, you know, the only bits I get, she has to take some of the money. <laughs> but that's to it. be honest, so that's like a few pence in Spotify, oh, isn't it? Well, is it point zero 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 four cents for every play? Yeah, is that it? That's it. That's we what make, you're making a lot of money from it. No, to be honest. It was more a case of trying to just get the music out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's the only reason I why think, we do Spotify. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. everybody does it now. Yeah, well, I was, I was talking to somebody the other day. There was a, I can't remember the guy's name. There's a famous guy in America, and he was bitching about the likes of you and I. We are putting loads of this, and I'm not saying you. I'm just saying this in a general term to what he said. Yeah, okay. Low quality music. It's not good enough. But anybody can shove stuff on Spotify, and that's why we suffer. And I sat there thinking, I'm going to swear now. But you can like, swear me. What complete and utter bollocks. Because I'm one of those people who thinks that at the end of the day, anything that anybody writes has its merit. Sure. It doesn't mean to say that you like it or you like it or I sure. like it. But somebody somewhere will like it. Yeah, sure. Right? So at least have some respect for somebody having a go. And if they've gone to the trouble of recording an album mm-hmm. and doing it professionally, I'm going to swear again. Why the fuck shouldn't they put it on Spotify or Apple Music or anybody else? I yeah, I think exactly. my, my issue with it isn't the amount of people putting on, although it does have an impact on that. My issue is that there is no, like it devalues all of us by offering us nothing in return. Yes, that like, I totally agree with you. Know, we're like, yes. yes, we have all the access to, to, uh, to the world essentially by yeah. being on the internet, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to do like, that dude saying it's low quality, but the only way you can get better is if you can spend a lot of time doing it. And the only way you can spend a lot of time doing it is if you get paid to do so, Correct. so you haven't got to worry about where your next meal's yes. coming from. Correct. So if no one's getting paid to do it, then they've, you know, you've got, you can, there's got to be a, a happy medium. Yeah, like, if you're charging you. someone 20 grand to record an album, who's got 20 grand to record an album? Yeah. They're going to do it themselves because they can. Yeah, exactly. So, if the technology's there, yeah. we're going to use it. I think and that we should be... Why not? Uh, and that's the, beauty, that's the beauty of it now because... There's just so much nowadays. I mean, I remember the, the days of sort of like before WhatsApp and Facebook. It was um, MySpace. Oh, remember God, MySpace. I remember when that, yeah. that first came about, I just thought this is brilliant. Mm. And I think there was all these dodgy like file sharing sites. I mean, yeah. I must admit, it wasn't Napster, I was I was a sucker for it, you know. And I used to sort of like Ill- illegally download, um, edit that out, yeah. uh, illegally download um, yeah. uh, music. Just because I wanted to listen to music, and I, I was uh, I was very poor at that time. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, funny. That's no different to my day when we would record um, C60s and C90 yeah, cassette yeah. tapes. No, I'm seriously. No, 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 we no, would, no, no. We, I would be sat there as a young boy with my cassette player in my hand, waiting for the top forty to come on. Bang! I did that as well. Yeah. And do you know what the saddest thing is? I was such an anal twat that I would be the one. Make sure I get it right. Make sure I get it right. That's <laughs> it. The whole song and no talking. Uh, yeah, that, that's that, was the, that was the bit where no, no different. Trying to get the nerd talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like again, it's, it's it's that kind of money thing. Or everything goes through. I'm going to get on my soapbox here, but no, like, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be careful. But, like everything, has, if everything goes through the spectre of money, so everyone comes down to money. Does he can't afford to buy the CD he wants? But he wants to hear the music because he hasn't got enough money as a tenor. Yeah. But the only reason it's a tenor is so the people who make the music can pay the studio, yeah. and that money's going to the executive. Yeah, exactly. It's all going through this like. Kind of see how it's cut up. And yeah, think of this brilliant. process of modifying it. When like I kind of agree with you in that, I everyone should be able to put the music out, and then yeah. the people will decide if they like it or not. But everyone should be available. But at the same time, you could just pay someone a decent amount of money so they can at least afford to buy, you know, some food once in a while. Yes, not zero point zero four pence per stream. I agree. And you're eating noodles for a month. No, I totally you know? agree. You can't have the owner of Spotify having billions and billions and billions in the bank. And you're having all these artists who are struggling. As you say, it's not about whether you're heard or whether you're liked, but at least ha- let the music have some intrinsic value. Yeah, whoever was saying that about it being the you know low quality ruin is just talking like you said. Oh, my, honestly, do you know when you, you look at something, because I'm one of these, when I look at something on the internet, I've always had this principle that you, if I don't like it, I'm just going to pass it by rather yeah. than be no. If I've got nothing that's nice to say, don't say anything. I don't see mm, the point. Okay, yeah. And But if I've got a salient point that I think I can make coherently, I would have done it, but I just thought this is an argument I'm never going to win because no. this is a guy who's made it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's made a load of money, money yeah, yeah, but he's yeah. pissed off because nobody's listened to his back catalog. Yeah, well, yeah. oh dear, was that what a bloody York? shame? No, it wasn't. It was. Uh, no, I wish I could remember his blooming name. I can see his blooming page now, but I can't remember his blooming name now. It's going to annoy me. But it'll probably come to me right at the end of the damn podcast. So if it's the way my brain works. Yeah, so if we're talking about uh, what you pass on and what you don't pass on, is a good segue into 
what are your influences for the music that you do? So what do you look for? Do you take inspiration from other music? Do you just write what's, you know, you said you write love songs, was it? If I go into how it started, as in why I started, I, have you ever heard of a Welsh singer-songwriter called Martin Joseph? Uh, he wrote a, a, didn't think so. He had, so had a, a, a load a chart hit single called When Dolphins Make Me Cry. Um, back, back 93, 94, I think. And me and my wife went to see him, and the second wife, uh, went to see him <laughs> in the Norwich Art Centre. Now, I, I'd never played guitar, never ever had any pretensions to go out there and perform or do anything. And I happened to watch him, and I thought, bloody hell, that's really lovely. It's beautiful watching somebody to be able to do something like that. So I went home. Now, my wife is the sweetest person in the whole world. I can say something like that right now, and I won't think about it again, not even into my head. About four or five weeks after that gig, I came home, she booked me guitar, guitar lessons for Valentine's Day. Aww. So I, I, we, we couldn't wife, afford it, lot, so I only had, yep. I had about half a dozen guitar lessons, and I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't very good, I was really crap, it took ages to learn. I think it took me hey. four weeks to get A, D and E. I was that slow. Sorry. But so you need yeah. ev everybody who, who picks up the guitar. I don't think there's any one person out there. And it dep again, it depends how much you do it. Yeah. When I first started learning, I was literally every day, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours every day. It took me like over a year to, to match the bar cards. Oh, I, can't, I still can't. Yeah. I still yeah. can't so, so you, you yeah. know, it depends how, how much you practice as to how much you get back out of it, how much reward you get from it. For me, the disadvantage was at that time I was 36, so my fingers were already set. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really realise they were too short. I couldn't <laughs> flip and reach big, you know, have, like you guys can go up and down the fretboard and, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, five frets in a span. Me, I'm lucky if I can stretch to four. Yeah, but you've got those manly hands. I've got spindly good. Yeah, he's got spindly and listen, trust me, me look at those fingers. fingers. Well. They are. Child so yeah, they are massive. It's an absolute nightmare. But anyway, it's so, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I had these guitar lessons, uh, as I say, it took me um, a month just to get these three chords off, but I did get hooked. Now, obviously I was working, I think I was working about 12 hours a day then, so I didn't have as much time to practice as I wanted. Then I changed my job and got a little bit more time. And I started to get some, I started to get more chords, started to get smoother. And the first person who actually said, well, you, you can play guitar, why don't you come and join our band? It was all instrumentals, like Shadows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the weirdest thing happened after, I don't know, I'd been playing with them for three or four months, and I was watching a TV program, and this is absolutely true. Never written poetry, never done anything like that at all. And I'd written, I'd, I'd watched this program, and it was about a guy called Stefan Kisko, and he'd been jailed for a murder he didn't commit. And then when he came out, he killed himself. I'm sorry, that's really depressing. No, 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 this, no, this no, is what no, happened. No, crack on. And it really stuck in my head. Now, things like that really do resonate with me. And for some bizarre reason, even, even my wife couldn't tell you why I did it, I started to write stuff down. And it was like I, I just had to write it out, and that was like the first song, and then it just like snowballed from there. I didn't, I just couldn't stop. And even today, some people have said to me, "Why do you do it? You're not successful. You don't sell anything. Nobody really follows you. So why do you do it?" I can't help. And the gen, they've, I've, I hate to say this, but there's one or two family members who've done it. But there you go. Um, but at the end of the day, I can't help it. It's no. not something I. I Consciously do. You just have the, you just have the need to the, write. That, that's how Mind the Gap came about. I read a story on the BBC web pages mm. and it was like, I'm a sentimental twat. <laughs> and it was like, bang, that ha I have to do that. I have yeah, to write yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do, do you have an idea first? Do, 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 does the does the sort like does a melody come first? Does does a riff come first, or just like a general concept? It, 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 or is it, it could be anything. It could be anything. It could be anything. I'm sat there, there was a. Uh, a song I did about a, a friend, well not a friend, an acquaintance I knew who was, um, he was really, really rich. Um, there is a point to this, by the way. He was, <laughs> he was really, really rich. It, that sounds like I'm going off on a tangent, but no, really rich. Right, we, we can edit, we can edit, edit the long windedness yeah. out of it, yeah. Stop That's saying the words going to long windedness. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, the next one's going to have to wait. Um, but no, so this guy, um, he came home and he found his wife in bed with another man. And, he's, and he, this was a really rich guy. His life literally collapsed like that. He ended up on the street. And I'm just noodling away on my guitar with this story around my head because I'd only seen it at lunchtime in a pub and he was absolutely plastered in the corner of the pub. 
and the song just came straight out, literally five, six minutes, the whole thing, it's a song called I Don't Know, and it still is one of those songs that I'm proudest of lit uh, lyrically, and that's just what happened, some bizarre reason yeah, yeah, is yeah. there, but it, it never was before, mm. you know, it took me, what was my fifth? 40 I think I recorded my first 39, 40 I think I recorded my mm. first album and I just don't know why I don't know where it came from yeah. it's strange isn't it because I think we're, we're kind of like that I mean Dudley's different to me because like a lot of my songs come from news stories I don't probably watch different news to you but yeah. I follow different news but like I'll hear, I'll hear about something and I'll be like I need to you know so a phrase will get in my head yes. and this is, uh, we've got a new song on our new album it's called About Six Months I heard I was watching um, watching Russell Br shout out to Russell Brand Russell Brand's YouTube channel yes, which yeah, is amazing awesome, yeah. but he's, he's just bossing right now like, he's so good but he was talking to uh, some people in, in the comments on his show there was like what's the difference between a uh, conspiracy and a, new, and a news story in about six months right <laughs> so that, that phrase about six <laughs> months just stuck yeah. in my head yeah like, I, I have these phrases that I'll, like, I'll hear something or like I'll, I'll read about something and that just one line I'll just go away and then suddenly I just have the song. Yeah. And with Dudsy, he'll be like out and about and he'll see something and then he'll like just write this abstract bit of like poetry. Like, because I very beatly like chorus, for, chorus, sorry, yeah. verse, chorus, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. verse, chorus, bridge. middle eight, bridge, chorus, yeah. fade, you know, fade, yeah. fade. <laughs> <laughs> done. And so, but Dudsy doesn't, Dudsy just writes. Yeah. Like they're almost like stories. Yeah. yeah. It's really yeah. interesting, like the, 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 the trigger points for writing a song. Yeah, and you suddenly like yeah, they can just happen thing. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the last one was the song "Sheep" that we've got. Sheep, yeah, um, yeah. which will be on the third album. It was just uh, me and my my wife had uh, hired a camper van and we went trawling round uh, the Yorkshire Dales. Yeah, and we were on our last day, and on the way back, we ended up just parking up. I can't remember what this tiny little village, and we just went followed this footpath, went for walking through all these fields, saw like loads of animals, blah blah blah, blah big oak tree. Loads of dead grass where all the animals like venture under there yeah. to um, to keep out the rain, and then I thought, yeah, that's where the idea, of the story came. Like two sheep, kind of like talking to each other, right? hatching an escape plan to, to try and get out. It's, yeah, great. it's, it's, it's great. It's a great tune. That, it's yeah, really, it's amazing. Cool. It's really cool. Did a really good job. But um, I don't know how we got onto <clears throat> that from influences though. Oh, I'm sorry, that's probably me. <laughs> no, I don't, I'm, I'm wondering, so wondering how we're talking about this, you know. Very, I, like, <laughs> I love it. I like the way you've uh, brought it back, though. That's professional. Uh, that yeah, is. Yeah, well, but but I, I liked how you actually got into influences because you went off a last convers uh, the last sentence of the last, I don't know, paragraph before that, and then all of a sudden you went into influences. Yeah, you, you, I mean, which I thought was quite smooth. Some yeah. people use the word genius, and I wouldn't agree. <laughs> I wouldn't agree but. <laughs> Yeah, there was a rice shake of the head there. What are you, what are you looking oh, at, Chris? Oh, hello. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Sorry. Uh, Chris uh, is eating crisps in the corner or something. Doritos. Dorito. Yeah, Chris. Oh, Dorito. Dorito. Sorry. Hi, Chris. Um, influences. Yes, so, so there was Martin Joseph was the <laughs> Martin first Martin Joseph. <laughs> we got back, <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, back okay. in the room again. Yes, We're back. Yeah, we're off. That, that, he was the one that actually got me playing guitar and then obviously into writing. Um, my, as, a, as a band, as I've mentioned earlier, it's Marillion. There's a guy called Steve Hogarth, which is going to come on to one of your questions later on. <laughs> he, yeah. To me, he is a genius, but he, the way you were talking, he's got a very similar way of writing to you, because he doesn't just write choruses and verses, he'll just go off all over the place. Mm. And it'll be, it'll be a free form, right, and then he'll go into the band and they'll just go anywhere they want with it. And yeah. I wish I could do that, mm. but I can't. I yeah, wish I could do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, but that's me all over as a person, though. Okay, fair enough. I, honestly, my, even my, my missus says, because I've literally just three weeks ago retired, and she said, I don't know how you're going to cope with this because you are such a nightmare for routine. And I thought, that's funny that, because the way I write tends to be that kind of way as well. Mm. I'm like, I have a routine where I, I've got that, like you said, you get the idea, and it's like, right, okay, I need to sit down. And then I'm, so I was literally scribble, scribble loads and loads of stuff, and then it's like, right, okay. No, that doesn't work. Yeah. That doesn't process work. of elimination, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, I know the lines that work and I know the lines that don't work. And mm. sometimes it'll be a case you write something and you flip over a. So, but you when have to we take were, words uh, out and. When we were off camera earlier, you were saying about um, someone who'd called you a. a, a, a a poor man. A destitute day. man. A destitute uh, yeah, David Gray, Gray, yeah. yeah. But how did, did you. Because obviously, I don't. You were probably writing music before David Gray came out. Because he was. Because <laughs> he must have been, what, in his 40s ish when he came out? Because he. 
Yeah, because he came from nowhere. Yeah, because he had that. Terry Wogan, was it? Was it White Ladder? Was it White Ladder? Yeah, White Ladder and Babylon. And Babylon, yeah. Terry Wogan. I always remember that. I always remember that song. Was it that? So what's the other one he released? Please forgive me. Yeah, remember they were on top of the pops, and they they're on top of the pops, and you know, on top of the pops, they record one video and they show we kept the same video. Yeah, I always remember that because at that. That, uh, the drummer on that hi hat. Oh, God, Jack is an amazing old, drummer. Old oh, drummer just going, yeah, so fast. Like, literally, the whole video, you're like, why is that dude just going crazy on yeah. the hi hat? So, how did that, anyway? How did that, um, <laughs> how, so did you always kind of write music like in the style of David Gray, or was no, it I, I, just something that's happened it, recently? It's, or? it's just when I, because I'm performing, in general, I perform by myself with a guitar. So, it, it's got that kind of solo acoustic guitarist songwriter kind of thing and although he performs with a band it's a very similar feel to him but when I've done my albums there's actually there's there's some prog rock there's some nice. rock there's all sorts of different things that I've had a go at over the mm. years okay but it, I don't I, I try I don't I'm not I don't mind being pigeonholed it doesn't bother me being pigeonholed no. I do like to have a little experiment with some other yeah, stuff really like and I'm stuff, quite yeah. lucky that a really good friend of mine uh, Stuart Braybrook um, He's oh, yeah. from Barry St. Edmonds. I finished. Yeah, he, 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 he'll come to me. Shout out to Stuart. With a. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> camera on that one, though. Hi, camera. Right. Um, yeah, he, he'll send me a, a tune that he's written because he's, he's an absolute fucking genius, is Stuart. He can just write so many different styles. It's unbelievable. And it, he's not necessarily, he has written lyrics, but he's not necessarily a lyricist. So, he'll write, right. Fire that away, have a go and see what, see what you come up with. Hmm. And so I love it when he comes up with something musically that I would never have composed myself. Because A, I don't have the chops to do it, but it wouldn't have even occurred to me. Hmm. Um, and we did a song which was released a couple of years ago now, When the Lights Go Out. It's quite a tough song, but the, musically it goes all over the place. It's really all over the place. Hmm. But as soon as I heard it in my head, this is going to sound sad, but it's, it's the truth. I had a very poor relationship with my father. Immediately, when the lights came out, that tune, that line came out, bang. So the song was written. written. Yeah, yeah. I'd written lyrics probably less than an hour because yeah, there was so much so flack in my say, head. You can never find that kind of hook and to get you into it. Was like, yeah, bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was all because he sent this one piece of music which, which was all different shades all the way through it. And about halfway through it completely changes. But it just worked. In my head, it worked. It's very strange how these things come about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the beauty of it. I mean, sometimes a song can come in like like five, ten minutes, and then others it takes weeks. Yes. Because you're stuck on something or you're, you're trying to find a particular hook or a yeah, particular yeah, yeah. riff or something like that. And it's so weird how it works. And that's, that's, that's what I love about the variety of anything to do with music. No, so it's, where, it's, where do you, you uh, so Sorry, where do you, rec where do you record your music? Let um, me uh, think, I've recorded, the, the Pure Blue was recorded in Purple Studios. What's in, Pure Blue? That's the first album. First, oh, first Mal's first, first album, Pure Shout Blue. Out to Pure Blue. Shout and out it's to under Blue. the name of Mal, believe oh, it. Was it just I, under yeah, the name of Mal? Mal I had to change because there was a guy in Spain called Mal um, who did a lot of Spanish, obviously Spanish, but he did a lot of Spanish style music. I thought, well, that's just stupid. So I might as well just use my own name because yeah, it's yeah, completely yeah. different. Uh, but then I recorded the most successful album I've had so far, which is One Year Out, which was recorded um, in Cambridgeshire. Um, and that, they're like two completely different albums. Pure Blue has got more of a slightly indie feel and mm. the One Year Out is more of a poppy focus. So do you do... Um is it like pure acoustics? You've got band, do you get no, a band? No, it's full band. The, those, full band yeah, it's full band. Yeah. Full yeah. Band oh, yeah, yeah, it's all full band. Nice. Um, and, you know, some of the work that Gareth Stewart did on the One Year Out album is just like, mm. oh, I could quite happily not bother it. Just take my voice off and just let me listen to the music. Well, if you ever want to come and do any uh, acoustic stuff, you're welcome to come to our studio and uh, do some do some solo acoustic stuff. Well, believe it or not, now I've retired, one bands, thing I've said is I want to record another album. Well, you can come and do it. Yeah, I haven't done an album for years. It's an like acoustic now, one because we're not set up for bands. Yeah, no, no, we're set that, up that's for, it. You know, the, we're set up for uh, individuals yeah. for sure. We'd love to oh, have, have it, in, especially if you're retired. Yeah. Now, time. Exactly. Yeah, I just said, you know, that, that was my. It was, and it was my missus who actually came up, who persuaded me to retire. She's ten years younger than me, and she was the one who said, "Look, what, what is your justification for staying on at work? We don't need. I know this is blase, and I don't mean it to be, but obviously I'm an old git, so you don't need the money. Why are you doing it?" I, I genuinely, I spent three or four days. Yeah, I've really gone off on a tangent again. No, that's fine, mate. I've got, I've got, a, good, I've got a good hook back in, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but I've gone, on, I've gone on for like three or four days thinking, why am I doing it? 
what is my purpose? What is my goal to do this? When I know that whether anybody listens to the music or not, I still love doing it. Exactly. So that's what I that means. Yes, mate. We agree with that wholeheartedly. We could agree more. It's not about the listeners. So it's about, you know, if you love it, yeah. getting it out of there. So, like we said earlier, you can't help. Because you're retired, though, like, I'd imagine there'd be some point in time where you'd be like, you know what? I'm retired. I'm going to go to a desert island all on my own. I'm going to take one musician. Oh. Who would that musician be? Smooth, mate. Thank Smooth. you. Like fucking Smooth. good. I like that. Smooth. One. Well, this comes back to the gentleman I mentioned earlier, <laughs> uh, Steve Hogarth. Steve Hogarth. Yeah. Can we? Oh, the Marillion dude. Can we get yeah. a picture of Steve Hogarth? Because I don't know. Shout out to Steve Hogarth. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, well I'm, I'm flashing I'm, up in a second. Here we go. This is going to sound like I'm deliberately shoehorning this in, but the, <laughs> it's probably I am. It's because you are. Because <laughs> yeah. right, last uh, Saturday night. Because I was at the Barbican, yes, I've shoehorned it in, but the big thing was, in two months' time, those guys are on the same goddamn stage as I was. Sorry, so what, why, why, why are you at the Barbican? Why were you at the Barbican? Right, so we've got, obviously, York, what, 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 was, what was the, the, oh, the Desert Island, sorry, you need to yeah, answer no, no, we got that. <laughs> Steve, we got Steve, we got, we got Steve, Steve, uh, did we get a sorry, Steve, we've got Steve who? St- Steve Hogarth. So why, yeah, so He's what? the lead singer of, um, of uh, and lead songwriter of Meridian. Shout out to Marillion. And again, we'll put again, them on the screen. If you check out their latest album, An Hour Before It's Dark, it's just goddamn. Check beautiful. it out, guys. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I just love Steve. I just think how he writes, like we said earlier, he's got a similar writing style mm-hmm. to you. You just do not know what the hell he's going to come out with next. It's just, and I've been a. And I was you a fan be on a desert island with that. With that, then, I'd, right? I'd be happy. I would. Just, I'd be quite happy to sit there and watch how he does his stuff. So, assuming that you're talking about Steve, uh, you said you were on the same bill as him. I guess that covers probably two of our questions because I imagine that's probably your notable. Uh, yeah. Your no, most this notable year, gig this this year. Within three months, I managed to play Grand Opera House and the Barbican, and that's like the Grand Opera House and the now, Barbican. Yeah. I'm done. Happy days. The Barbican is really good. The Barbican, the both. I mean, the Grand Opera House is just a fantastic venue. Oh, good. Yeah, we the acoustics in there are amazing. Yeah, Barbican's no. not too bad, but it's more yeah. kind of square as the Barbican. But it's a big stage, so you we do like the uh, we do like the uh, small dingy uh, clubs and pubs. We do, but we'd uh, we would appreciate a big stage. So, uh, well, to be yeah. fair, hey, York Barbican. To, to be fair, <laughs> obviously this is because no, out to York. Shout out to York Barbican. Your guy, you know, Ian Surgeon. I mean, this is because yeah, he's yeah, been yeah. good enough to invite me to play at both. But and, uh, with apologies Ian. to the sound man at um, the Grand Opera House, because I know you're going to kick my ass for telling this story. But when you mentioned the acoustics, oh yeah, I remember. You know what's I remember. Happened? I know what happened. Yes. yes. You, so can, you can tell. I'll, I'll tell a quick story. I'm is it going to be quick? I'm joking. I'm joking. I was literally joking. I was literally joking. You can do as long as you want. Anyway, so, um, right, again, because this was like, again, the most massive venue I've ever played. I've never done anything like this because, again, I'm just a small little tiny little man who plays little tiny venues. So I got, um, the day I was doing this um, gig, I must have rehearsed the two songs I was doing. One I'd written which uh, is about Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. Ukraine was the gig. Ukraine was the song I'd, I'd written it about. And then I was doing a cover. Shout And I had been re- rehearsing these songs in the green room. I must have rehearsed them 16 times. Sound man said to me once, uh, I'd done my sound check. Right, all you need to do, plug lead into your guitar, plug lead into DI1, go on stage, crack on, you're done. So, out I go. Bear in mind, I am absolutely shooting a brick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I go out, and the first thing I have to do, because and I, and I, I, well, I'm warning you now, I will do this on the night of the gig up here. I do talk about why I've written each particular song because well, I just do. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. That's fine, yeah. So I, I, I had this particular song. Um, I hope was called "I Hope You're Proud," and it was um, based on um, a, a Ukrainian lady who was hammering these Russian soldiers, really giving it some shit about um, invading her country. Uh, the I hope you're proud was an ironic term. And I was introducing this song, and then I go, right, away you going, and I'll play it. And the audience was totally silent. And I thought, fuck me, I've gone. I've absolutely gone listening. Anyway, to be fair, really good applause at the end of it. So then I launched into What's Up, Four Non Blonde song. Because I thought, well, you've gone down that road where everybody's gonna be listening and a bit, so now you've got to give it a punch up. So it really went down well, I thought this is fantastic. Went through the curtain, really sorry Mal. Well, your guitar wasn't plugged in, your guitar wasn't coming through the speakers. It was plugged in, 
they crossed over the DIs. So right. there you've got this tip with an acoustic guitar hammering away at it, singing at the top of his voice. And it's like, oh, really? No guitar. And if you go on to, I, don't, I think it's on my page somewhere along the line, I think my wife recorded it. And um, although in the first song, bizarrely, it worked because they listened to the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the second song they, they heard, but I'm so glad I didn't hear in between because apparently my wife turned around and shouted, will you sort his bloody guitar out? <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, I've been there. We've been in his lab. I've the one on the mic screaming at same men. Same men, just get better. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, you've got one job. Not, not that, so that's clearly not a shout out to all the Simon. No, I don't But to be fair, there are good ones. Simon, if you watch ones. this, Simon, we know we've sorted this out, and after the shit you've just been through this weekend, my friend, you deserve a medal. Because <laughs> you had a load of trouble with the sound at um, the right. barbecue. Well, I don't know. A lot of it, a lot of it wasn't his fault, and his, his um, soundboard crashed. Oh, Jesus. And we got there at 11.30 to rehearse all the acts. Didn't play a night before, bro. So, um, so we've covered a notable gig. Um, but was that, no, was that a notable <laughs> gig your favourite gig? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, th this this one that's just gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, that was for Yacht Rocks against Yacht Rocks against Hansi. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, mean, we, I know we've. I think we've probably broken the Shall record for the York um, Rocks gigs because I think we had 720, 740 people in, oh, but, yeah, which wasn't bad. Yeah, really good, yeah. um, we knew the competition we were up against, there was a lot going on, plus the school holidays. But anyway, um, I was in the house band and obviously it was on and off all night long. But the, I think the thing I was most pleased about is because the song that I did on my own, which is called Mind the Gap, I nailed it. The band nailed it because they'd come up with an it arrangement sounded, that was yeah. just Oh, so gorgeous. Amazing. Everything was amazing. And the audience loved it. And then I went into my cheesy bit, which everybody seems to want me to play wherever I go, which is Sweet Caroline. And I thought, yeah, I know. I, hey, but at the end of the day, people went nuts for it. I agree with that. I actually do agree with the uh, rolled eyes. I can't argue. <laughs> no, no, I agree with you. I'm not going to argue with you. I am not going to argue with you because I do actually agree with you. But you. You can imagine if you two were asked to play. This one of your own songs, time after time after time after time, there comes a point where you're like, I'm not again. But if you know... We do. We have, that, we have that song. If you know <laughs> the audience is, is, is bouncing off of it every time, what are you going to do? I are you going to play it? No, I, I don't play it, you see. Oh, really? Yeah. But unless it's required... Not that song, but I mean as in one of your songs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd be basically taken everyone's favourite song of ours. I took it out of the set for about a year. Oh, really? Yeah, I got sick of the fucking song, yeah. I mean, I, don't, I, I get sick of playing Sweet Caroline, but what I never get sick of is the audience reaction. And yeah. if you've been there Saturday night, it was mental. Yeah, but Mal, you didn't know me that well. Like, it's not, that, isn't surprising for, that isn't surprising for me. I'm a contrarian. I'll do stupid shit like that. But I get your point. Hey, fair play. I agree with your point. Like, you should always try and make the audience bounce. Yeah. But sometimes I just get pissed off at the songs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just can't do it. Anyway, anyway I, yes. I, do, I do agree with you in some respects. I just yeah. don't like that song. No, but no, I, there's a lot. The, the, some of the lads in the house band, they did, they, I mean, I know they did not want to, or didn't like it, and they weren't that keen on playing it. Mm. But I'll guarantee you this I've seen the video. Everyone yeah, bloody sure. smiling. Yeah. I know, I know, I, 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 I get your point completely. I was just being, no, I, I was being facetious. And that's just like being, I in the, being, in the, being in the moment as well, you know. Yes. I, uh, yeah. You're not going to get that moment ever again. No, I, I, that to me is probably going to be the pinnacle of my performing career. It'll never happen again. I'm, I'm realistic enough with hey, that. There's time, there's time yet, mate. Oh, there's time yet. Yeah. Hey, there's centre stage, 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 stage to come on the 5th of August. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's true, yeah. Hey, that could be the one. That could be the one, you know. That's your back, you mate. No, no, stage. It's centre stage. You're no to the man. Are you sure said the stage is your no But no, we, we do really uh, appreciate you coming out and doing it for us. Yes. Uh, no, it's, it's something that we, we're, we're, really, um, we're really passionate about, trying to get more people to be able to play their own music. It's always like, um, actually your story you just told is, is quite, um, quite apt really because it's always like, yeah, you can do your own songs if you do some covers. And we're yes. like, fuck that. Just yeah. do your own songs. Like, yeah. We want to hear people's own songs. We don't want to hear... Yeah, you can do three Verona. We hate that three Verona and five covers. But no, yeah, we're not no, a covers yeah, band. We do we do covers if we really like the song and we've done a good arrangement of it. Now we've got some covers that we do yeah. and we love doing them because they're fun. Yeah. Like we do like a Prodigy one. Which, you know, yes, I've heard that. That's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so we like that shit, you know. We do good. And, and we do bombs. girls want to have fun almost ironically because no yeah. one expects us to do it and it's no. funny. Like, what what are you doing? But like we don't want that. We want people to be. Um, like doing their own thing. So with that in mind, what do you think would help get more original music out in the local scene? 
Do you know? This is it. This is it. This is always a good question, and it it always sounds like I'm going to give a contrary answer, but I don't. I'm not doing it deliberately. That's cool. I think I've had this discussion with a lot of people, a lot of songwriters over the years. If you go back to my kind of era, not as a songwriter, but just as a listener, you had very, very few TV channels. You had very, very few radio channels. You didn't have computers. You didn't have mobile phones. So people's attention span yeah, was locked so. in to certain things. Yeah, yeah, the problem you have nowadays is you have got gazillion radio stations all over mm-hmm. the place. You've got everything on the internet you could wish to have. You've got yeah. streaming. You've got this. You've got that. And it's really hard. And I, that's why I admire you two, because you are determined to get, take, forge your own path. But it's really hard when you're a songwriter to have the balls to say, this is all I'm going to play. I want people to come and watch me because of what I write. When you know that cutting through everything else that people have got their attention drawn to mm-hmm. is very, very difficult. It's very difficult. And yeah. if I was perfectly honest, I wish I could have a, a decent answer that would answer your question. But th- this is something I have thought and thought. I just, I, I mean, you would have seen it as you've gone around different gigs that you've done. The talent that is in these. You know, Selby, York, yeah. and the yeah, surrounding yeah, yeah, has blown me away. Oh, so there's, 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 there's others that must be bubbling under the surface yes. as well. Sitting in their bedrooms, that, not that discovered. haven't yeah. actually been out or they don't want to go anywhere. And yeah, that's the, what the way about this. It's a trying to reply to a question. I think Dodgy would agree with me on this. The way we see it is the same as you. That the the uh, the bandwidth now is so big. There's yes. so much to take in. But but like if we can find a way, I, if there are good people hidden away that people don't know about in these local areas that do original music. Yeah. If we can get them out playing music, it does benefit us. And now we need to get rid of that kind of attitude of, well, if they get a gig, means I won't get a gig. So fucking what? Yeah. Like, you'll get a gig if you deserve a gig. Yeah, and if we all it. work together, we can have things like set the stage where everyone gets where paid, everyone, gets, a everyone chance, gets half an hour, 40 minutes, everyone can get some money, everyone can have the opportunity yeah. to play their own music. And if people don't watch it, there's, we can only bring what we bring. And everyone will have. Oh, we can. Everyone have, will have an audience as well. No, which, which is kind of like. Really we don't want to be owned by anyone. We don't want to be produced by anyone. We don't want anyone yeah. buying us. We don't want anyone saying do this, do that. We just want to do what we want to do, which is go somewhere where we can get people to play their own music and entertain people because people fucking love it when they do it. See that? That's the bravery. And that's what I meant when I said... Well, it could be stupidity. Took... <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> no, at the end of the day, it does take balls to do that. And I, I, I'm a gutless twat. I'll be the first to... No, hang on. I, there's a reason I'm saying this. Right. At the end of the day, I've been to plenty of gigs where exactly what you've said, where you can play a couple of your own songs, but really we'd rather you do covers. So I just do covers. I don't... I deliberately don't play any of my own stuff. Mm-hmm. And the, the example I'm going to give is um, I ran a festival over at Ruffiths in a small village and we had loads of different acts on all day. And I obviously put myself on because, you know, I'm part of the... Um, Why not? Yeah, part of course, the yeah, too, right? And I played covers all through. And then two people in the audience and one of them actually said, why the bloody hell don't you play one of your own songs? Because they'd heard me play before. Mm. And do you know what? For the first time ever, I actually stood on the mic and just said, you know what? Sod it, I'm going to. And I did. But what you're saying is quite right. You have to have the balls to say... I'm going to play originals, I'm going to get other player people to play originals, mm-hmm. and the more people do that, maybe it'll start to cut through. Yeah. But and here's how people will come, out, come out as well, you know. Yeah. The whole point of it is is creating a nice, warm, vibrant atmosphere, happy, comfortable, safe. happy, safe place for yeah, people to drugs. feel comfortable to come and play. Yeah, not drugs and, and, yeah, and, and people yeah. are going to listen, they're not going to be pissed up in the corner shouting the mouths off because we do have a, um, an element of um, shut up and listen word? you bastards yeah, shut up and listen yeah. you bastards because if, if somebody's playing a, like the other week we had uh, Eve Thomas shout out to Eve oh, yes, so yes, Eve. we had her on and she's quite um, quiet she's quite a, a very, quiet very, player yeah. and obviously you know we turned her up as much as we could on the PA but then obviously we were having to sort of like just the odd one or two here and there it's just like okay just you know yeah and you know, people respected that. And yeah, well, that amazing, he did it as well. It was, um, it, it was just great. That's what we're just trying to do. Just trying to like get people to do it and not be scared of doing it and like create. If you can start off with an environment of like safety and support, yes, and maybe that'll like go out. We don't know yet, you know. We That's just it. hope we can. It's a, you know, it's a start. It's a stepping stone to say that there's yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 
funny enough, you, you've used a few a word a few times tonight, but what you've just said is right, scared. There's a lot of people who are actually scared because you see all the crap when you post the song and all the rubbish comments and all just that. Just don't read it. But no, I, I, I'm not saying I do because at the end of the day, it's more of a duck's back. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't care. I couldn't even mind because I don't yeah. care. <laughs> but don't I, read comments, people. I've seen youngsters. And I've talked to youngsters who write their own stuff, and they're like, well, you know, at the end of the day, people hate it. No, and I, I go back to something I said very early on in this conversation. There is not a song that doesn't have merit for somebody. So just stick to your own path if you can find the balls to do it. Yeah, I mean, so it's like when we do a gig, don't matter what gig it is, if we're at some, because we sometimes venture off out to Hull yeah. to play with the Ramble Gamble, shout sure. out to Ramble oh, Gamble. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so um, I think they were fine. And because people there haven't heard of us or, or don't know what we're about, we just sort of like every gig, it's like, right, if there's 50 people in here, well, if we just make one person go home happy, then we're done. we've done our job. Spot on. Spot on. That's what we do. Spot that's on. It. And so we, uh, obviously, that's where we give 100%, 110% yeah, no, every performance. Yeah, but so, you're um, not like to. I've seen you too, so I know you're not like <laughs> to. Yeah, so I, we've got a, I don't uh, think you have 99% in you. We've got, <laughs> we've got to wrap this up, and as we're talking Sorry, about gigs, no, no, it's fine. Shit. That's cool, doesn't matter. Um, uh, as we're talking about gigs, are there any gigs that you want to promote? Where can we find you on social media? Can we find you in music places? You can find Please me. tell us everything. Obviously, all the usual streaming sites, Spotify, and your Malfry. Malfry. M A L F R Y. There you go. Yes. Don't look up Mal Western Fry because you'll just see some twat. <laughs> Lots of photographs of holidays and <laughs> dogs. Uh, oh, he's gone. Um, yeah, the, well, the only actual gig I've got booked, funnily enough, is the one here. Well, because I'm taking all of us. If you want to see me, if you want to see Mal Fry, come to Centre Stage on Friday, the fifth of August. Excellent. Next Mal, Friday, actually. Thank you so much for the great conversation. Oh, really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what song are you going to be doing for us tonight? Um, I'm going to do a song called Find My Way Home. Find My Way Home. That's amazing. Excellent. Guys, thank you very much. Yes. And cheers, Mal. You're a star. Thanks, Mal. Thank you very much. See you, buddy. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.